from the southern tip of Africa comes a voice of revival. A voice revealing God's truths and desires for our lives. A voice equipping saints with the practical application of God's Word. We've got to have a firm foundation and that's the Word of God. So have your Bibles, notepads and pens ready as we get into more practical application from God's Word. Now all that's required is for us to have an absolute trust in this Word. Let's join Alan Bagg for more wisdom for life. Good morning, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. Today, we want to begin having a look at our Faith and Finance Conference. We got together as a church over three nights, and we wanted God to teach us and guide us and help us and instruct us in the area of our finances. You know, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And a lot of people have misconceptions around the arena of finances when it comes to the body of Christ. But God speaks very explicitly in His Bible about finances. And we want to renew our mind in those areas. And so enjoy this and I'll see you later. Come with me to Proverbs chapter 4. Look at verse 5. Get wisdom. Are you there? Get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. Wisdom will preserve you. Love wisdom and wisdom will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Not a principal, the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. That's duh. <laughs> Say that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And look at the next statement. And all your getting, get understanding. In all your getting. We'll see why in a moment. Getting is a way of life. Without you even realizing it. Everything in your life is about pursuing. It's about getting. Getting somewhere, getting something, getting someone. Getting, getting, getting. I've got, I've got to get a husband. I've got to get a wife. I've got to get a boyfriend, get a girlfriend, get a job, get a car, get a house. Get, 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 get. You wake up, get, 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 get. Get breakfast, get coffee, get, 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 get. By the night, get sleep, get, get, get. Isn't that right? And all you're getting, get understanding. Most people rush to get before they focus on the understanding. In all you're getting, get understanding, exalt wisdom. Wisdom will promote you. How you would like a promotion? There's your answer. Wisdom will promote you. Wisdom will bring you honor. How many you want to see honor in your life? Only seven of you? Wisdom will bring you honor when? When? When you embrace her. I wish I had what you got. Wisdom got it. You want what I got? Get what I got. Wisdom. Don't get the stuff. Get the wisdom. If I had a house like you, if I had a car like you, if I had a bank balance like you, if I had a wife like you, if I had children like you. Those things don't come by accident. Come by wisdom. Well, if my children were obedient like yours, I just, I don't know, my, my ones just aren't, you know, I don't know. No wonder, you know, it's nice life for you. Your children listen to you. It wasn't by accident. Wisdom. Everybody say wisdom. Wisdom will honor you, will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory, Wisdom will deliver to you. In other words, we are clothed with the favor of God. 
Everybody say wisdom. 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 Say it again. Wisdom. wisdom. Amen. So we need to pursue wisdom. That's the key. That's your answer. That's your solution in any area of life. So when it comes to finances, finances are not your answer. Now I know there's a bunch of people that are <laughs> just don't want to hear that. But if we can renew our minds to these things, God's desire is for you to prosper. It's His will. It is His will. Psalm 35. Psalm 35, verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. <laughs> I love this church. Praise God. See, that's that instant obedience we were talking about. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually. What does say continually mean? What does say continually mean? It means that's what you're going to talk about all the time. Isn't that right? Say. Isn't say talking? So let them talk continually all the time. Talk all the time. So what must we be talking about all the time? Let them say continually. Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Now, if that's in your Bible, will you lift your hand up? Okay, so that didn't come out of my Bible. Let the Lord be magnified who? Well, it did come out of my Bible, but I'm saying it wasn't just my Bible. Let the Lord be magnified who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Lift your hand and say, my God is pleased when I prosper. Does prosperity please God? Does prosperity please God? Then I need to be talking about it all the time. Ooh, somebody just wondered how they got painted into that corner. Because the Bible says, let them say continually. If you favor God's righteous cause, yes. if you're born again, yes. you need to be saying all the time, all the time yes. God has pleasure in my prosperity. People say, do you teach that prosperity gospel? There's no such thing in the Bible. You can read your Bible cover to cover. You will not find the prosperity gospel. There is only one gospel. The good news. That's grace. Jesus loves you, died for you, paid the price for you, spirit, soul, and body, and rose from the dead, and He's alive today. Believe that? You're born again. That's the gospel. And in that gospel, the moment you're born again, His full blessing is activated in your life. You are blessed just simply by being born again. Born again. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. It was paid for in His death and resurrection. That's the gospel. And that gospel includes your eternal life yes. in heaven. Set. You are going to live forever. Amen. Amen. Eternity. Yes. Amen. Amen. Included in that is your healing. Yes. By stripes you were healed. Amen. Your deliverance. Yes. He took every infirmity, bore every pain. Yes. Took every sorrow. Yes. Isn't that right? Your complete provision. Amen. Complete provision. In every area. Jesus, even though he was rich, for your sake became poor, that you through his poverty might be made rich. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. Now, in that gospel is prosperity. You cannot have the gospel without prosperity. But if you name it prosperity gospel, you're only looking at a fragment of the gospel. But the gospel includes prosperity. Let me help you with that. Are all poodles dogs? Someone's 
If it's a poodle, it's a dog. Yes? yes? Are all dogs poodles? No. 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 <laughs> so if we're talking about poodles, doesn't mean I only believe in poodles. Yes. There are lots of other dogs. You come another night, we can talk about Alsatians. Talk about another night, we'll get to Staffies. Are you with me? We, we, we can go through the dogs. But if we're talking about poodles, you don't go away and say, he's a poodle man. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the gospel includes prosperity. But here's the thing. God is pleased in prosperity. Does he say that? Lift your hand and say that. I believe my God is pleased when I prosper. Why? Why? Why does he take pleasure? Results are proof of laws obeyed. <laughs> it's, it's slowly sinking in. Results are proof of laws obeyed. When the cake comes out the oven and it's all puffed up and it's all right, you know you put the right ingredients in. Isn't that right? If it comes out and it's flopped and it, it, you taste it and it tastes sour, so you know something's not right. You go back to the recipe, you go, ah, I forgot to put in. But when it comes out and it looks the way it's supposed to, yes. you're pleased. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. You know, Mama, when she opens that, I'm going to oh. Family's going to like this. Amen. Why? She obeyed the instructions. Yes. So a good result proves laws obeyed. Amen. So why is God pleased in your prosperity? Because it shows you believed Him. Hebrews 11 verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God is pleased in prosperity. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. With faith, it is impossible to please God. Prosperity pleases God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Prosperity pleases God. Therefore, prosperity took faith. So when people decry prosperity, talk against it, shows me, I don't know what the reason is. Hosea 4, 6 could be ignorance. They just don't know any better. Could be laziness. Don't want to put the effort into it and try and excuse. See, mediocrity is always challenged by excellence. Mediocrity is very easily offended. When everybody's average, you look like you're the best. Isn't that right? If the only average people in the room, you on top. But then when excellence walks in, all of a sudden average looks like it needs to improve. Mediocrity says I'm happy with being average. Not when I serve a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that I ask or think according to the power that works in us. I'm done with mediocrity. Yes, I serve an excellent God. Yes, I, do. I serve a God who's more than, enough. more than enough. I serve a God that's more than everything that I ever could ever need. Isn't that right? Amen. He's a God that wants to show you His pleasure, His good works. He wants to show out in you. He wants the world to see. That's exactly how Moses... Remember when God got all put out with Israel and says, That's it, I... I'm done with these people. Moses, I'm going to keep you. We're going to go and do this thing. I'm just going to wipe out the rest of Israel. Moses says, hang on now, God. Are you going to tell me that you're going to let the rest of the world think you deliver your people? 
and then they just die in the desert? And the moment he said this, is God repented. Yes. Amen. Why? Moses knew how God operates. Amen. He wants the world to know he's good. Yes. He wants the world to know he cares about you. He loves you. He protects you. He looks after you. He's a father, a daddy. Our own natural common sense tells us that a good parent looks after its child. Isn't that right? Think about it. When <laughs> I'm, I'm not meddling in your affairs. Whenever I go, yeah, I think of that person that comes up to me and says, Pastor, if you had a problem with me, you should come speak to me first. Not in front of everybody else. Usually when these things come up, a lot of people have it. <laughs> have you noticed with your children, when they're about to go out, and they come with a hole in the pants, or the shoe with the fo- sole that's falling off, or something's broken, what do we do? Go change. Isn't that right? Now, we want to make ourselves believe that it's for them. We don't want them to be embarrassed. But you know it's not about them. It's about you. Yes. Come on. How many you can be honest? You, know, you don't want no one. No, that, you, people mustn't see that because that's me. That's, I'm the parent. You put your good shoes on. Excuse me. I buy you nice shoes. You put that junk on. It's a reflection of who you are. We know that. Yeah. And yet we're going to accuse God of leaving His children to suffer because they still got something to learn? No, 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 no. How dare we put that on our God? He's a father. He's our father. See, there are a lot of religions that serve a God. God is God. But that's His... That's like saying... You know, my wife is a human. But I don't talk about my human. This is my human. Hello, human. Do we? So why do we dress God, God? Now, if I find my relationship slipping, I'm not keeping him in that place. Then I will say, you are my God. So that I'm settling my heart. That I recognize him as God. But when I dress him, I dress my wife, my darling. Isn't that right? I dress my father. Seeing that? He's my father. Father, I thank you. Father, I praise you. I will say, Father, you are my God. Darling, you're my wife. Are you getting this? So, we make sure that we get our relationship right. When you understand that, it'll help solve a lot of problems. Because God has told us He has pleasure in your prosperity. That's true. Without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Faith produced the prosperity. So prosperity is a reflection of faith. Activated. That's why people, if they don't understand these things, they say, you're telling me if someone's poor, they're not blessed? I didn't say that. They are blessed. But have they activated it? It's like I walk in the room and it's dark. I don't say you don't have electricity. I say, why haven't you put the lights on? I know the electricity is here already. But if you put the light on, you'll see you got electricity. Now, some people don't know they got electricity. Or they don't know where the switch is. So they're still in the dark. Doesn't mean they don't have electricity. You are blessed. The fact that you're born again, you're blessed. That blessing makes rich. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Lift your hand and say, the blessing of God makes rich. Electricity makes light. But you have to put the light on. Faith and finance. There is a spiritual issue to finance. 
Most people don't know. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So no one has a financial problem. They have a wisdom problem. Uh, mediocrity is behind us, and increase is our livestock. There are principles, there are factors, laws of increase. Increase takes place the quickest and easiest is when you're at rest. We went through a number of scriptures showing that the whole theme of the Bible, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, is increase. So I'm trusting God that each and every one of us are going to have an encounter. Today I've broken the spirit of barrenness and poverty in my life. And if we can put that into practice, we can only look forward and never look back. How do I see money? How do I look at money? How, what's my relationship with money? The Faith and Finance Conference went to another level this year. Many lives were touched and changed in an awesome way. Make sure you get your set and keep meditating on the powerful truths and revelations that were imparted. Well, as usual, you know we never have enough time on these programs to be able to show you everything. We spent a lot of time in a lot of scriptures discussing a lot of things. We can only show you snippets, just portions of it. But I want you to get a hold of the series. There's over three, four, five hours of teaching here about the Word of God showing us that increase is God's design, that He desires to see it in your life, what our attitude needs to be in that area, and how we can walk in increase. It talks about renewing the mind. So I encourage you, get yours today. If you're desiring to see increase in your life, in every arena, whether it's your ministry, your family, business, and particularly in finances, then get it today, the Faith and Finance Conference, and listen to the CDs, and allow to renew your mind in that area. And as a result, faith will grow, and I believe you're going to see increase in your life. Amen. Well, my dear friend, the most important thing that we need to know before we walk in any of these things is that we are children of God. Maybe you're watching this program. Maybe you flipped into the channel, just happened to be breezing past, but now you're here. But you've not yet given your life to Jesus. I want you to know He loves you. He gave His life for you. He died for you, and today is alive, proving that all your sin is paid for. The Bible says if you would believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So let's do that right now while you're watching. There, where you are, just close your eyes, and I'll give you the prayer, but just say it out loud with me now. Say this, Dear Jesus, thank you. You gave your life for me, and then you rose from the dead. And today you are alive. I believe that. I call you my Lord. You're my Savior. Right now, I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. If you've just prayed that prayer, then you are born again. Now, I want to send you something that's going to help explain to you what's just happened. Also, some guidelines now that you are a Christian. And also this study program is going to help you read through your Bible in a year. And then I'd like to give you this CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure Into His Kingdom of Victory. Now that's my free gift to you. I want to send that to you. We're going to pay the postage on it. Just call us on that phone number or write to me at that address. As soon as we have your details, I'll send that to you and it'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, that's all we have time for today. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. And remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. The Bay Christian Family Church is one church meeting in many locations. If you are in the Cape Town area this weekend and would like to meet with us at one of our locations, join us and be part of the great times in God's powerful presence. It is one church, multiple locations. One church, one vision. We meet in the Somerset West location on Saturday and Sunday evenings at 6 p.m., as well as twice on Sunday mornings at 8.30 and 10.30. We meet at our Steenburg location on Sunday mornings at 8.30 and Sunday evenings at 6 p.m. And we also meet at our City Life location on Sunday mornings at 10.30 and in the evening again at 6 p.m. Join us in Somerset West on the corner of the N2 and Fabric Street at Section 3 Gantt Center. Our Steenburg location is situated at 11 Seely Street 
and our city live location meet in the city of Cape Town. For any information regarding our services, please call us on 0800 Wisdom or visit us online at www.allenbagministries.org. Allen Bag Ministries has made this week's Wisdom for Life programs available on CD and DVD. To order this week's programs, contact us at this number or these addresses and we'll send it to you as soon as we can.